Welcome to Acoustic Wisdom, where we take ancient and modern wisdom and we smash it into acoustic music. Welcome to the second episode of Acoustic Wisdom, and today we're going to take a look at the Tao Te Ching and banjos. So in the Tao Te Ching that was written 2,500 years ago by Lao Tzu, which translates into Old Teacher. This is a great book, and if you haven't read it, you don't know about it, you should pick it up. Uh, I have read multiple versions of this bunches and bunches of times, and you can sit down and you can read this thing in probably an hour, but it's going to take you a lot of times to really fully grasp everything that it's talking about. And my favorite version was written by Stephen Mitchell. And I'm going to read a passage. This is the 11th verse from the Tao Te Ching. And this is Stephen Mitchell's translation. And it goes like this. We join spokes together in a wheel. But it is the center hole that makes the wagon move. We shape clay into a pot. But it is the emptiness inside that holds whatever we want. We hammer wood for a house but it is the inner space that makes it livable. We work with being, but non-being is what we use. So there's a lot to unpack here, and I'm just going to show how this applies to music in general, but like I said, there's a lot to unpack here, and it can apply to everything. So what we're talking about is space. Space makes things useful. You know, we talk about when we are improvising maybe on, on a guitar or any instrument, and how do we create space? And if you just fill something up with notes, it's just note, 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 and there's no space, there's no breathing room. And I've heard stories of solos by Miles Davis and people like that where they would just stop and they wouldn't play anything measure after measure goes by and all of a sudden they just burst out a note and the crowd goes apey they go crazy and it's that space like what's going to happen what's going to happen and that is what makes it great it makes it so great so speaking of space i wanted to show you a tune of mine that is from my album in la Cash. the song is called soups and in this song i have a uh, many of guitar solos and mandolin and different things like that that's going on. But in this guitar solo, I'm phrasing a lot and I'm putting spaces in between my notes and in between those phrases. So I want you to listen to that and see if you can pick out how does that feel when that space is in there. Like sometimes you might anticipate like, oh, is, is the next note going to come in here? Is it going to come in here? So let's check this out. Here is Soups. <laughs> So, okay, so I hope you, you heard that space that was going on in there, and how does that affect the sound of the solo? You know, is it better to just shred a whole bunch of notes to just skiddly-doo, skiddly doo through there? Or is it better to just play a little bit of notes and then let it, let it breathe, you know? It's about breathing. Everything is about breathing. So, um, there's a whole lot of songs that I could show you that have this in there and I didn't want to get into any copyright things so I wanted to play something of mine that I thought that really showed that a lot and um, so you can hear that song you can get that song off of iTunes Spotify all of those different places you can get the album from me at my website but uh, check it out check out the whole album it's that one is just all instrumental and uh, might be something that you're into and now we're going to do some banjo music so when we talk about banjos and banjo music, because that's what this episode is is 
about, at least musically, I'm going to play a uh, tune from my banjo book, and I'm going to put the banjo book right there. You can see the cover of that, the wonderful artwork by Stephanie Schatzer. My wife did that. She did all the artwork on the inside. And I suggest that you get the book. Even if you're not a banjo player, you can get it for the pictures. Okay, And there are little bits of wisdom that I've taken from old things, just kind of like we're doing here with the channel, and I've sort of geared them toward the banjo specifically. So some of them are kind of funny and lighthearted, but uh, they're pretty powerful too, I think, that uh, it will make you think about your practice a little bit. So in this banjo music, usually there isn't a lot of space. You know, we fill up the notes, and that's part of the, the style of this. But how do we make that a little bit different? So in this case, in my banjo book, we have banjo melodies and harmonies together. So we have banjo one playing this part, banjo two playing this part, and the way that it builds can build up dynamics. And those dynamics are what we really need in order to make a song special, something that sticks out in our minds. So here again, from the book, we have the tune Needle Case, and we have the melody that starts off first, then the harmony comes in, and then I have a guitar part that is something a little bit different, maybe not an old-timey way of playing it, but then I have a tenor guitar that comes in, and then a mandolin that comes in, and I really wanted to do a video like this. I've seen a bunch of people do things like this where they layer things and layer things, and I've also changed the harmony in some parts. So sometimes you only have three chords, but those three chords can be changed. You know, maybe we throw in, if I have a C chord, maybe I do an A minor, I do the relative minor of that chord. And these things are great and they make things sound really good, but you definitely don't want to do it when you're playing with somebody who doesn't know that you're doing these changes. But if you're the only instrumentalist or you've worked things out, these can make these tunes really, really great. And to me, they make them more listenable. They are listenable, but they make them even more. They, they, they capture our attention a little bit more. Ooh, look at, listen to that minor or whatever. So let's check out Needle Case. And I'm going to post down in the description where you can pick up my banjo book, Clawhammer Duets. And let's check it out, and we'll see you soon. Thank you.